Hello everyone, welcome to episode 1 of a 4 part tutorial series on My Control 2. My name is Mark Dysers and let's get right into it. Episode 1 will tackle the inspector interface and My Control's most basic feature, namely the small but simple loudness value. The loudness value is a very basic representation of your microphone strength. We will use the loudness value to simply scale an object in this tutorial, but of course, your imagination is the limit. Let's get into it. We start by firstly stopping the scene. We disable what's already here, so we can start from scratch. Let's place a cube in the scene. Yeah, that should be fine. Now we're gonna create a new script. I use uh, Unity script, but if you're using C Sharp, make sure that you place the complete My Control 2 folder in a plugins folder or standards as folder. This way you can always access My Control through C Sharp. Let's call the new script scale test and open it. Next, we're gonna place a controller in our scene. Go to game object, audio, click on my control. And on your right hand side, you can see an inspector with several options. I'll go by them one by one so that we can see what everything is and does. First of all, we have the loudness bar. The loudness variable is always accessible and is represented inside this bar. Below that, we have the option to select the use default device microphone this simply means, if selected, that the microphone that is set as system default will be detected and used. This is highly recommended for mobile platforms so that the correct microphone is automatically detected. When not selected, the script will automatically detect every single device connected to your system and you simply have to click in order to select it. One major thing to take into account is that in order to prevent input lag and memory leaks, the system will always be paused when not inside an active game window. So as soon as you click outside of it, record button will become red and the device is not streaming. This also counts for mobile platforms if application is not in the foreground and for Windows platforms if the window is not active. For Mac OS X, it's exactly the same. The only issue with OS X is that you cannot use multiple microphones. The operating system only allows for one connection at a time. Next, we have the advanced settings tab. This is closed by default, but it's always smart to have a quick look at it. The first option is the debug. This will show you extra information in the console tab, but the most important one is already shown above in the loudness bar. Don't destroy and load is for another tutorial. It's mainly used for multiple scene setups uh, in which your controller needs to stay alive in between scenes. The mute option controls the audio mixer. Since Unity 5.3, Audio sources can no longer output data when muted. Because of this, my control makes use of a custom audio mixer so that the audio source is always active but not audible. In order to hear your own feedback, simply deselect mute and you can hear your own feedback in game in 3D space. Enable spectrum data analysis is for another tutorial. It's basically the big brother of the loudness variable above. The frequency is very important. It's best to set this at exactly the same value as your microphone in your device settings. You can check this by going to your device settings, go to properties, click advanced and see your hertz rate selected. In this case it's 48,000, so for optimal use I will select that option. The RAM buffer time is uh, how many seconds will be recorded into memory. It's best to leave this just as one because most of the time you want a real-time feedback so it's no need to load more into memory. The sample amount is how many frequencies get loaded in that buffer time and the sensitivity is an extra amplification to your loudness value. We're gonna already increase this because a value of 1 is basically the raw input and it's most of the time too silent. Uh, you can also adjust the sensitivity through a custom script if you need to have custom options in your game. So let's set it to 100 for now. Okay, let's get into scripting interactivity. To get started very easily, simply click the copy loudness setup and you can paste a simple setup in your script. In the my controller variable, we will place the controller we want. In case of multiple microphone setups, you will uh, have multiple my controls in your script, so you can also call data from different my controllers if you follow the same type of setup. Uh, we create a loudness variable in our 
a bit loop that calls towards the mic controller's float, in this case loudness, which is the direct stream we want to have. We simply apply this to the local uh, y-axis scale of the cube and we already have interactivity. Normally, if everything went right and we drag this script on top of the cube, we drag the controller we want to call from in the slot, and that's basically it. So if you click play, there we have it. The cube is now scaling towards our voice. Of course, I'm using this to simply scale, but there's way more possibilities. Your imagination is a limit, as stated before. There's a couple of example scripts which show you examples of how to approach certain scenarios. We have a script that explains how to blow against rigid bodies to have like a breath of blow interaction in your game. A blowout module that's ready to go, you can drag it on top of your controller or anything else. It will have several classes. Basically it has an if statement, if strength is above 2 for example. You can then add several objects that need to be enabled and disabled. They also have a maximum blow strength, so if everything goes above the limit, an object will be disabled, another will be enabled. For instance, if you have a candle, you can disable the light source and enable an audio source to play a blowout sound. But that's not relevant to this tutorial now. What we did today, scale the object, is also found in a reference folder. You can always analyze the basic setup and the functionality of the other scripts on your own time. I hope you learned something today and I will see you in episode 2 where we will tackle a multiple microcontroller setup. Bye!